Welcome to Good Service. We are your hosts, Ben Chung. And Kevin Zha. Each week, we'll be breaking bread and having real, raw, and vulnerable talks about life, faith, and everything in between, and always over a fire meal. Thanks for joining our table today. Let's eat. You know, uh, going back to business and things like that, I think... um, Though I, I see you as somebody who sees the trend or you see the thing that's coming, like, yo, we got to mm-hmm. hop on this. And um, what I love about what you, what I see you always try to inject um, into the things that, for instance, like with Meteor, right? With the whole Web3, all this stuff, the the advancement of, of the digital world, yeah, uh, right? that is gonna keep happening, uh, yeah. whether we like it or not, like yeah. AI, yeah. like, you know, people wanna, you know, bash on NFTs, but like the technology and all that stuff is is here to stay. Yeah. So though that stuff in and of itself is sort of worldly or secular, there's no inherent spiritual value to those things. Yeah. Yet when I see you build in those spaces, you are like, yo, how can, how can this be the future of church? How can this be the the advancement of the kingdom of God, right? Like yeah. you said, the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is always advancing. It's yes. coming. Amen. It's as heaven on earth Amen. is going to happen. Amen. So like, like here's the thing that I was sharing with um, the homie the other day. We were just like talking. We we're just like we we're just riffing off of each other. But I felt like Holy Spirit was just giving us just just downloads. Yeah. Because you know we talk about the fear of these things. Like yo AI man, this is danger to humanity yeah, because yeah, in the yeah. wrong hands it could yeah, do blah blah blah. But what about in the right hands? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like what if in the hands of the people of God yeah. can that not be used as a tool? Like what what the enemy wants to use for yeah. evil, like the the children of God are going to use to advance His yeah. kingdom. And so, you know, when I see you step into these spaces of technology, of the advancement of things that are happening, I see your angle is like, how can, how can the Lord be, yeah. how can the Lord use this? Where can the Lord inject himself? Where, where, you know, we're the hands and feet, right? We're the ones who are called to fulfill the great commission. Yeah. So I, I just love that, you know, your, your mind is always um how do we how do we bring um jesus into these things that are already happening yeah and you know like just the other day like uh bless you sorry sorry, like like vincent our homie vincent was saying you know like when it says the gospel reaches the ends of the earth right how did what's the ends of the earth and how does it happen sure missionaries and and people being sent out physically are is still happening yeah but bro we got this thing yeah, right yeah. we got the internet we got social media yeah, yeah. this is how we reach the ends of the earth yeah, like yeah. internet and and people most people who do have like the access to cell phone and stuff like i mean bro the power of media social media um that 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 is how the lord is using i mean people yeah. like this is a part of it like yeah. this goes out and reaches thousands of people you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying so yes, i just does. i love that um your mentality in business is like yes you you are very much your eyes and your eyes and ears are open mm. and then you're like okay like lord what do you want to do with this how do we build for yeah. you so i'd love to just even hear your like current where you're at with with building and 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 um business in different industries and all of that right. so the word was freedom right mm-hmm. but the reason it so i'm not saying i'm so there's a guy i listen to um I, I just like his teachings, but he talks about like wealth creation. This guy, Naval Ravikant, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's well-known in Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. prolific investor. But I love this idea, he, or he, he talks about this idea of four types of luck. First kind of luck is like dumb luck. Like mm-hmm. you just, you had bought a lottery ticket yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just like, boom, I got lucky, right? The second kind of luck is luck through repetition. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like that dude at the club that hits up every girl and then all of a sudden gets like the one hot girl and you're like, dude, it's like, no, he hit up like a thousand. Yeah, yeah, he put up the reps. <laughs> he put the reps <laughs> yeah. up, but the one hit, right? Yeah, 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 and yeah, a lot yeah. of people in business are in that, right? They're mm-hmm. just, hit, they're trying everything. And the third lucky, yeah, I might be butchering it, but this was at least what I took uh-huh. in. The third is expertise type luck, right? So meaning you're really good at something, right? So like you're like this, the best underwater diver like in the world and there's a guy that ha- found a sunken ship with treasure well because he found the ship the opportunity came because you do this so mm-hmm. together you guys now have a unique opportunity and right. that's a really actually a mm. cool place to be in in business when you become an expert at something so like for mm. instance you with uh podcasting or kevin like also these opportunities and pop-ups like dude you know 
I, I just did a pop up. Like I was telling Kevin, like I don't even know what we're doing. It just happened randomly. Like mm -hmm. it, like Ed, like shout out Ed, big brother Ed. Yeah, but yeah. you know, we did one at Phil Bake Shop, and you know, it was like we had, dude, it, it popped off. But it was because my expertise working with influencers and merchandise, right? And then also working with Kevin with Sonic Speed Cafe and understanding that particular model, mm. right? Like without doing that, when I met with Ed, you know, the founder of Wahoo's, right? That has these other restaurants, like, hey, there's an opportunity. I was able to match that with my core competencies and we were able to crush it. Like we did like four days with Dante Bosco, shout out Dante too, but you know, we did this mm -hmm. pop-up event with all these voice actors and we probably like, I don't know, like four or five X the revenue, right? Like 10 X oh, for yeah. those particular days. So that's like the third kind of luck. And then the fourth kind of luck is what we should all be striving for as like entrepreneurs or achievers, right? Is the kind of luck that's inbound luck where you're so successful and you're so good at what you do. And you've hit so many times that the inbound just keeps coming in. Mm -hmm. And you're literally like saying no, or maybe, Right, <laughs> like you, you, because you're, you're, there's so much stuff coming in. Yeah, that that kind of like so, you know, um, the question you were kind of asking is like, you know, the season I'm in, or like when I'm when I'm doing like different technology and stuff. It's like I, instead of forcing things these days, I'm surveying. So when I was saying like the friction, so like, I don't know, what did I say? There was like some, something I heard like it was like yahweh or something like i think that was it. it's like the word means like it's like the breath it's like mm -hmm. it's like the mm -hmm. pump right it's like up and then back down and the cool thing about this pump concept is like there's there's the one motion and then it comes back you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so one of the things i've learned is like not to react on everything it's just survey just survey mm -hmm. just be okay like give each day our daily bread yep right that's all we have Mm. Uh, one of the things I got into while I was in Hawaii, surfing. And I think surfing is like a very spiritual practice. Like for me, when I go out there, you know, you go out and you're paddling out, but you got to wait on the waves. There's like mm. sets. And at the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing. So like, this is like my, like, let's say my business, my twenties, right? Like dumb luck. I caught a wave. Oh God, I'm going to be a professional yeah. server. I'm like, yeah. no, I, I don't know. what. Yeah. I just yeah. hit it and I just happened to be at the yeah. right place at the right time. Yeah. So you yeah. just keep going out. You realize you're not that good. So you try, try, try a lot, right? And you don't, you catch a couple because you're trying so many times. But there's a moment where I started realizing there's sets. So there, not every wave you're supposed to catch. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Like, mm. I didn't learn from anybody. And that's yeah. the great thing about the Bible too, right? We yeah. have like this amazing book right, that we could learn from. And yeah. we have prophets and people that we can learn. We don't have to always learn our own lessons. We could read books, like I would, I, podcasts, you could listen to things and learn, right? But yeah. at that stage, you know, like with surfing, you're like, you realize you have to wait. And then instead of catching every wave, the key thing is to find where the break is. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna be in the white water because in the white water is terrible. You're just, you're just plowed, right? Mm -hmm. So you just get out and then you see the good surf, you'll see them, they just chill. Mm -hmm. And they just chill on their boards. And then the craziest thing is this, when they see the set come, because I don't know when the set comes sometimes, but you just see them, <laughs> right? They turn yeah. to, dude, they look like they're, and I think that's what mm -hmm. really good entrepreneurs do. Wow. Yeah. They're, they're like chilling to get to the right place. Everyone else is swimming, <laughs> like doing what the beginners do, right? But the great entrepreneurs, they'll swim out to where, like, where like I want to get to, or where maybe I'm get, kind of getting there, but like you know, you, you know, and then you realize you're kind of like in a company of people that kind of know what they're yeah. doing, yeah. right? Mm. There's a saying like the further you go out, like the, or uh, the deeper the water goes, the, the the more it thins out the herd, right? So you know, you go out a little further, like your expertise is a little bit more. You're amongst people that are like that, and then dude. You see people start saying, hey, yo, time to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, this is not a pitch for Bitcoin, not guys. I thought you were going to go black and get it. But, gonna, but you were talking about new technology yeah, and yeah, you yeah, realize yeah, like sure. be around where smart people are yeah. and you could be dumb and still catch luck there. But mm -hmm. if you could work your way where you can actually catch the waves yeah. and be where the people that are catching waves are, you're surfing there. Mm, that's dope. You know, something, I got this image as you're talking about, like the, the real expert surfers, right? They're just chilling, waiting. Yep. Because they, 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 they know, it's like, it's not even worth going to chase after that. And it's not, it's not even, you're not even going to get the result that you think you're going to get because it's just, that's just not the right um, circumstances for that thing that you're actually trying to catch that dope wave. Yeah. 
And um, so there's this like patience, but there's also, um, I'm reminded of uh, one, of, uh, one of our homies, our good homies, Will Chung, shout out Will. He said something um, literally yesterday on social media, he was talking about um, like pacing. And he says, if you, if you pay attention to the way that Jesus, like the pace that in which he lived, you know, Jesus slept, he took naps, like he mm -hmm. didn't always, mm -hmm. it's time to go here and preach the gospel, it's time to go here. He would just hang out with his disciples. Yep. He would go spend hours to go pray, you know, when, you know, the him and his disciples were in the boat and the waves are crashing and they're yep. like waking up, Jesus, we're perishing. And yeah. he's just like, yeah. And here he is taking a nap, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like the, the pacing of Jesus, which, Obviously, as believers, what a Christian literally yeah. means like little Christ, right? We follow the way that Jesus lives. So we we should be paying attention. Like, what pace did Jesus live mm. at? Yeah. He he waited for things. Yeah. He's like, it's not time yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not time for me to go there yet. There it is. It's not the time. And so I think that it just I I, I got that imagery of like of you know as an entrepreneur just kind of yeah because you've been out here enough you kind of know how things work you kind of see things coming mm. and then when you said like yeah if i'm not the smartest person I, i'm gonna at least hang out with the smarter yeah. people so that i just watch what they do and yeah. then when they do it i follow them right yeah. you know and i think that's that's literally our call is pay attention to the pacing of jesus and in, in how he lived and there is um he never moved without asking his father, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. he, yeah. And he even said, like, even to, to the point of going onto the cross, he even said, Lord, if, if this if there's any other way, mm. let this cut pass. But he yeah. said, but not yeah. my will, but yours, you know? And he followed mm. his father's pace, you yeah. know what I mean? So I think there's something very, um, there's a lot of gold in that, even in just your observation of like, even the expert surfers, they, they wait, they yeah. wait for the right thing that they know is coming. And then when it comes, they go for it and then they catch it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were talking about the waiting and how we talked about friction earlier. Yeah. And, you know, we emphasize, uh, I love how, Dan, you emphasize on reading books, looking in the Bible, listening to podcasts. Uh, trying to get that gold from others instead of yep. your own experience. And there's so much in that, like mentorship, yep. looking for people to speak in your life, looking for people to have things you don't have to learn from. Lately, what I've been really hungry for is I just start like looking for people that's been hanging out with Jesus longer than me. Mm. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I literally like it's like, oh, you've been you've been with God for 40 years. Yeah. Dope. Like, mm. let me sit with you. Yeah. And when I sit with these people, their pacing is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they've truly learned this like, like invincible pacing. Yeah, and nothing phases them, mm -hmm. and they're in this sweet spot of this perfect joy and peace, mm. and they just live like that. And yeah, it, and I could see it. You could smell it off of them. Yeah, it's like holy crap. Right, and I think um, <laughs> you give me a whole different definition of what holy crap you said i could smell it, it smells like holy crap <laughs> hey that's the bit that. that's, that's the bit that. right there <laughs> did not mean to do that but uh hey that's pretty good it's like i teed that, that up hey. <laughs> but a uh, i know that a t-shirt uh, it's like i want holy crap bro <laughs> i want that like sweet holy crap. Roll, dude. um oh my goodness that's ridiculous bro. oh man right yeah, that was good that was good i didn't even really um and that's and that's something that I hope that you know when people listen to the pod and yeah. listen to some of the things you shared today, is that it's either it's either you're gonna learn from others, be open to mentorship, opening your ego and your heart and your expectation to learn, mm. or you're gonna go through a valley. You know, the, this one was so good, right? So you're talking about refinement, right? And then we're talking about surrendering and then mm. friction. So that guy, Mark, um, he's like, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't really like pay attention to like signs and wonders and miracles. I was like, what is all this, dude? Like, I, this is like weird. I grew up Presbyterian, you know. I was like, like, we talk about this every other episode on this right? one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, I started being open minded to it, right? So I've learned that like business, you you have to be open minded. Like you, mm. like you don't know what's gonna happen, and you have to be ready, right? You can't. You can't just be like, oh, this is, a, you, you know, you have to have a goal. You have to see like where you want to go, but you kind of have to be like nimble. There, there's a book called Lean Startup that I love. It's like minimum viable product, 
every two weeks sprints and you you're always open to adjust and change things right but um uh, you know i was i remember he he had, like so like i'm like open to this thing and it's just hard like sometimes you hear like at church like people like screaming or like dance like you're like oh, is, is this normal is this okay yeah, right yeah, and yeah. i had to get past a lot of that mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. um i don't that for some, I don't get hit like that, mm -hmm. you know. I, you know, I, I respect it. I'm like, oh, that's the way that God breaks out in your life. Mm -hmm. Great. Like, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's just like a one size fits all yeah, spirituality, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like we all worship and uh, engage with God in our own ways, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't judge anyone else on their journey, right? Like one one workout was not gonna work for another person, you know. I, they all kind of work out, mm -hmm. but you know, you find your own. But he said this one thing to me that that was really cool. And as you were talking, I was like. He's like, um, he's like, he has this English, Daniel, <laughs> you know the refiner's fire, right? But he was like, you know the refiner's fire? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, he goes, well, the refiner, and he says it's so like, like it was so random, I was just like working out and he just like snuck this in, it just hit me so hard, like so hard. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. And I think everything I'm saying kind of revolves around this. When I said freedom or friction or, you know, the, the pump or all that stuff is, he said, um, and what does a refiner do to the gold, right? So he puts the gold into the fire, turns up the heat, and the scum rises to the top. He takes this like ladle or whatever, he skims the top off and he looks, right? Then puts the gold back into the fire, he turns the fire back up, right? The scum impurities come to the top, he scrapes off again, right? And he just keeps doing this and doing this and then doing it over and over and over again until he pulls it out and then he knows. Like knows what he goes. The refiner knows when it's refined when he sees his reflection in mm. the gold, mm. and we're mm. the gold. So when God sees his reflection in us, mm. that is the refinement process. Bro. And I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what I was saying. Freedom, because you start to understand. Oh my gosh, guys, come on, think about. It. You start to understand that this mm. whole thing is a process of being refined. We just don't realize we're being purified mm. because this isn't the end for us. Right, at least right, I, right. I don't believe it is, you know, but like, why do I want to subscribe to the ways of this world? Yeah. Maybe these impurities, like every fight that I get with my wife, I learn another thing that I'm like, like, let's scrape that one off, God. Mm -hmm. Am I reflecting you more this time? Yeah, right. Wow. And like, that's the trippiest thing about Jesus too, right? It's like, we have a different father Mm -hmm. that we can emulate. My worldly father might not be the best example of what I want to do or be to optimize my human potential. But Jesus Christ is a pretty good, you know, mm -hmm. thing to go after, right? It's like Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. You know, he went and he was patient. <clears throat> he exemplified the fruits of the spirit. Why not subscribe to this guy? He, yeah. Jesus is pretty cool. You know, like that's a, if everybody subscribed to Jesus, how would this world mm. look like today, right? But we don't subscribe to Jesus. We subscribe to, you know, Elon Musk or, you know, Kanye West or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And like people like want to- I miss Kanye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old Kanye. <laughs> the old Kanye. But you, you feel me though? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. almost like by, by going, and accepting the process of refinement, we actually get to live a different type of life that mm -hmm. would have never been. So like I was saying to both of you guys, you guys said yes to some stuff like with dance or like with the food stuff and it opened up new doors. Well, what happens when we say yes to God? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what though, speaking of saying yes to God and we, we even brought this up earlier that when, you know, after we reach some sort of breakthrough, you know, we get attacked. Right. And um, someone said something super just like dope about what when does the enemy attack is when he sees that you're on the right track. He sees, oh, shoot, like this guy's running after <clears throat> God. It's time to, it's time to try to slow this guy down. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like we, we can't let this happen. So when attack or when the, the hurdles, whatever we want to call them, when they are present, like that should be an indicator to us that like, oh, I guess I must be on the right track. Yeah. Because otherwise mm -hmm. the enemy would leave me alone because I'm no threat to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're in the game. Yeah, you're in the game. And and, you know, the the other beautiful side of that is because then, you know, easily you could be like, well, then why would I chase after God? I don't want to get attacked yeah. by the enemy. Stay on the bench. But, but exactly. But the <laughs> but but Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead 
that all powerful spirit lives within you so the attacks of the enemy those are just like little irritations yeah. you know when we like you said i don't want to give power to that as if like ooh, yeah. like enemy scary i don't want to get attacked yeah. by that guy it's like nah dude f that guy like yeah. we got we got holy spirit in us yeah. like mm-hmm. we are undefeated you yeah. know what i mean we might yeah. get we might get knocked down here and yeah. there and and i think going back to the refinement you know even even in our knockdowns, even in our temporary, like oh shoot, I stumbled into that again, or yeah. oh man, I you know I'm, whatever, like I'm just not on track as I should be, you know. Enemy uses that as like ah see, like that's yeah. you fell off, bro. Might yeah. as well give up now, you know. What's the point? God can't use you. You fell off, yeah. but that is a part of that refinement too. Even our sanctification yeah. is a process, you know, struggling with our our flesh and certain sins that we may still, even to this day, as people who love God and walk with him, we may still struggle with things. And that process of getting refined and even get, yeah, getting those impurities out to get them scraped off. Like God is not saying, I got, I got 10 swipes for you, bro. You better get it figured out in 10 (laughs) swipes. Otherwise I'm throwing you out. Like that sounds very Korean. (laughs) Holy shit. That's not that's not our God. We don't got the Korean God God yeah, the Father. Yeah, 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 we we yeah, have yeah, yeah. the perfect loving Father who yeah. is patient, yeah. and and He's like as many times as it takes. But we're gonna keep we're yeah, gonna yeah. keep going because He you said that we are the gold. His yeah. children. He views us as precious gold. Amen. And he's like, I'm going to keep refining you. I'm not throwing you away. You're precious. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep refining until I see myself yeah. clearly. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I think that's a beautiful, like very well-rounded, holistic way of looking at refinement. Because yeah. it's, it's a hurtful process. Because yeah, yeah. the impurities are the stuff that hurts. It's the, it's the you know, disappointments and it's the ah, discouragement, the temporary. Because yeah. it gets brought up and then and God says, cool, like we're getting closer. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode so far. Just to keep it real, it takes time, energy, and resources to produce this pod. If you feel led to, you can support us by donating on Cash App at Good Service Podcast. Any amount, large or small, is truly appreciated. Thank you guys so much. We love y'all. Back to the episode. Hurtful till it's not. Right. Because like these MMA fighters, right? You'll see like, dude, I'm wearing Shama, right? Like yeah, this is yeah. a concept with Alex Pereira. Like, dude, this dude is like the light heavyweight champion. He was like former middleweight champion. But every champion, every hero needs an adversary, right? Think about like Tom Brady. He, They need adversaries. Kobe needed an adversary. LeBron needs an adversary. Like Steph Curry. Like when you're on this hero's journey, without an adversary, you get soft. And then eventually mm. what they do is you'll see these champions like, I loved it because, you know, he pushed me to the point I didn't know I can go yeah. and I unlocked this other level. And I was, I was playing golf the other day and I was telling my friend, I was like, oh, I was like, in the threshing is where you find the blessing. In the threshing is where the blessing is. Mm. It's, it's never these loud things that God says like, Hey, you know what I mean? It's like the quiet stillness, but in the threshing, sometimes that's when you're listening for him because you're just like, mm-hmm. you're just like, you can't, you're not, you're not like relying on your own survival fo- uh, fight or flight mechanisms. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like that's your, your flesh. But when you're like surrendered and you're just like in the threshing, you're like in the flow, you're like, ah, oh, like God, right? And then he's just like whispers, like, he'll say like something like, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> or something, I don't, or something, right? Like, cause you know, you think about like all these geniuses, right? Or we think that are geniuses, scientists, artists. They, do you you'll read up on them? Like, oh, it happened when I was sitting underneath an apple, you know, a tree, right? And like gravity, you know, mm-hmm. or, or whatever, right? But it's <laughs> but it, it's not like yeah. when they were like, I'm busy, I'm busy. It's like, dude, I, I I took a moment and a breath, but like you know, in the threshing, I was like, ah, but then it's like. Are you listening for that quiet stillness? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or are you even like, uh, I forgot, um, are you creating space for that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, um, what do you call it? Like, not pattern. Um, 
I go, anyways, like, a, like, are you, are you, is there a discipline that you created mm -hmm. so that you're open and you're ready for those things? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, so. yeah. You know that there's, um, as you're talking about the, um, yeah, the the adversary is where having the adversary, having this sort of opponent, whatever the opponent is, yeah, is the thing that makes you like the fight or flight. The yeah. fight or flight only happens when there's opposition. Yeah. Otherwise, you're chilling. You're just coasting. You don't yeah. have that response of do I fight or do I run? Yeah. And um, you know, when I even think about, I recently ran my first marathon just a, like a month ago, and um, you know, twenty six point two miles. I've never run that far ever in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that for the props. I'm just like, yeah. can I do this? Yeah. This is. I've never even gotten close to this yeah. distance before. Ben 5.0. <laughs> and so, sure, I, I, I trained that's for true. it. That's, that's true, dude. I, I did train for it. And, and you know, I, I, you know, did what I thought was like, all right, I've trained as much as I can. The only thing now is to just go for the big, the big thing, climb this mountain. Yeah. And, um, so you know, I, I, you know, from miles zero to 18, I was coasting. I was like, bro, I think I got this. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, he said, mile 17, I'm like, it's cool. Mile 18 hits, boom, I hit my wall. Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, dude, yeah. my body's hurting. Yeah. Like, Ladies and gentlemen, 42 hits the wall at <laughs> mile 18. Let's get it. Anyways, continue. And so continue. like, yeah, my knees start to hurt. <laughs> my, my hamstrings start to hurt. And that's when like the mental is like, bro, you still got, you still got miles yeah. to go, bro. You know what I mean? And yeah, so that's wild, dude. And um, and you know, and the whole time I was just like, crew, I was listening to an audio book. It's cool, right? Yeah. And then I had already had this prepared though, right? Because I had I, I listened to David Goggins, yeah, uh, yeah. "Can't Hurt Me." <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I mean. And yeah. like when when I listened to that, I was like, "There's get no, hard, stay there's, hard." Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Who's gonna get the ball? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing. Wow, Seventeen ain't nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Seventeen hundred. Get, up, get the boats. <laughs> so as soon as I hit mile 18, I turned, I was listening to Bobby Hundreds, this is not a t-shirt because it was dope. I was like, yeah, I inspired yeah, like oh, how he okay, built his okay. culture. Like, yeah, six, hey, six, shout yeah. out Bobby, bro. Yeah. Hey, we gotta get mile 18 hit, I was like, bro, I need some Goggins in my ear. So yeah, I switched yeah. my audio book and yeah. I was just playing Can't Hurt Me. Yeah. And that just put me in a different mindset. Yeah. And it, it's not, I still have to run the same amount of miles I have to run yeah, yeah. regardless. But then I'm putting things in my head now that's like pushing me. Yeah, yeah. And then, and it's weird because uh, I asked, thank you know, shout out to Emily and Darius. They, my, I had some friends that were pacing me. So that helped. They were like encouraging, Ben, you got this, you yeah, got yeah. this, you know, so they're running with me. And the last mile, so mile 25 to 26, that's like the Bravo zone. That's the last home stretch. And then you you cross the finish line. And they were saying, hey, mile 25 to 26, you're on your own because we can't finish with you because they were just pacing me. They're not actually even supposed to be running with yeah. me, so they have to get off the track. Yeah. So I'm like, crap, all right, last mile is I'm, I'm on my own. And and once I once I hit that wall of miles 18 to 25, the pain was, it was there. It was like, it hurt a lot. But what I saw Ooh. was the pain stayed consistent though. It didn't get worse. Mm -hmm. It just hurt a lot, but just consistently hurt that much. Yeah. So what that told me was, yo, you got one mile left and you're done. Yeah. And so then I was able to just like crank it up. I was yeah. like, bro, let's turn it up now. Yeah. And like my my mental was just like, let's go faster. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like my my last mile was like my best mile because yeah. I was just like cranking and it was yeah. hurting. Yeah. But I just knew I was like, man, you're almost at the finish line, yeah, yeah. dude. Just go. Yeah. And and that itself was, you know, talk about an adversary. Like the 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 road ahead was my adversary. The pain that was like annoying and and it, it was there. Yeah. But it wasn't getting any worse. And I knew that I the finish line was come was right there. Right, I could right. see it. And so what that really taught me, even as just the life lesson is, bro, like when you feel the pain and when you feel the opposition yeah. that is real, it's yeah. not fake, yeah. but that only has so much power over you as so much as you give it. Yeah. But if you know like, yo, I'm gonna push myself past and not like to be like, oh, like I am, yeah. I am my own whatever king. Like, and literally I was praying the whole time too in my last mile, 25, I was like, <laughs> Lord, thank you. I wasn't even like, Lord, get me there. I was like, Lord, you are getting me there. Amen. I'm like, you are running with me. You're mm, carrying yeah. me right now. And so it was, and the great thing, it wasn't like the pain went away yeah. when I started praying, pain was there. Yeah. So with that, like God is present with me in the pain and he's carrying me through to the finish line. Mm. So I just think that that's a beautiful, 
um, way of looking at the opposition that we face yeah. and, and the different, the peaks and valleys that we go through as entrepreneurs, as just people who live this life, yeah. as followers of Jesus. Like God never said that following Jesus was gonna be all freaking yeah, yeah. peaches and rainbows. You know what I mean? So you think about like these marathon runners too, like when you see them, right? There's like a club, like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it's like, why? Because they know that, mm. what, what's the mile that you were at? 20, 18. 18, yeah. and it's like, and I think when I was saying that in the threshing is a blood, it takes, it takes a while to get to that point, right? Like even in business, right? Like, you know, there's this, there's a thing like with business that like you can't just always look for the good. Like, like problems is often where you find the biggest revelations, right? So there's, I love the saying, it's like, you get paid by the size of the problem that you solve. You solve mm -hmm. little problems, you get paid little. Mm -hmm. You solve big problems, you get paid a lot, mm -hmm. right? So you get paid according to the problem that you're solving. Mm -hmm. So by putting yourself in these situations, right? And like, see, and like that's what I was saying, like, you're like, oh, you know, it's like the victory and then there's attack or mm -hmm. there's uh, the breakthrough and then the friction, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like, it's just to understand, like these are all part of the process and the mentality of it is to embrace every moment. One of my favorite things that I've been on this, these days, right? I call it like the Costco package. And I'm like, you know, imagine, dude, check this out. So this is, this is if I was, this is one of my favorite things, dude. And my wife actually goes like, this isn't, this is a, not a bad one. And she's like, um, so I have this like just thought, right? It's like this whole AI thought or whatever. It's like very like future punk or whatever. But like Kevin, you, me and Ben, mm -hmm. we're in year 8035. Okay. And we're ballers. Okay. Like quadrillionaires. Let's go. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, yeah. And we had done something, but in the future, there's no problems. Everything's perfect. It's utopia. Everything is just like perfect every day. There's no health issues. There's no financial issues. Everything's just pristine. And at Costco, it's like the biggest company then, like shopping-wise. And they got this Costco package and they're like, hey, you want the human, the last human experience when they actually had pain and it was suffering and like there was still like turmoil and stuff like that because there was a time where everything got solved and like it just became utopia forever right and like oh my gosh i really wonder what that would be like right, right. and they're like okay cool but you got it, it's a lot of money so you guys spend all this cash. so us three we just spent a ton of cash and they're like but the thing is be like total recall like the minute you go back you're not gonna remember anything hmm. right so you get to live this thing called the human experience now, if you knew you spent a ton of money, if you spent a ton of money to be here, you would not waste it. Now, uh, the catch I throw in there as a believer, I said, here's the thing. You're going to get scared when you get back and things are going to feel uneasy and there's going to be like, because that was what they did back then. Right. Imagine going back and there's dinosaurs. You'd freak mm -hmm. out. Right. It's not Jurassic Park. You'd be like, oh, shoot, there's dinosaurs. Like, okay. The hack is this. There's this guy that you can subscribe to. It's called Jesus. Okay. And if you receive this concept where you receive him this understanding of eternal life and you understand like you know there's no need to be anxious no need to be worried but always in prayer and petition with thanksgiving right and you subscribe to these things of jesus you could live the optimal human experience you don't need to be worried like all these other people because that's not you you paid a lot of money to costco to be on this human experience package and every good thing you paid for but every bad thing you paid for so when you go through tragedy, just remember, you like, like that's like that's something that humans do, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get to experience that. Like if I if I got to be a fish, I get to be a fish. But I, I, I wanted to buy the I get to get chased by the shark, but I survived. Tour, right? It's like I get the adrenaline. For, but that's what we like. So that, that trip that I have is like, you know, we subscribe. We we paid for this package to go through the human experience. So one of these things, we're not humans going through a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. Where spirit's going through a human experience. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if you flip that and you really, and, and, and as believers, yeah. that's how we, we these, are, these things are our avatars. These are our fleshly bodies. We don't subscribe to what our flesh tells us to do. Mm -hmm. We relinquish our flesh and we subscribe to what the spirit is telling us. And we align ourselves with the spiritual rhythms of heaven. Mm -hmm. And we get to live the most amazing human experience tethered to the most amazing wisdom from the heavens and the security that we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be fine. Cause guess what? At the end of the day, everyone dies. Right. Yep. Right. But yeah. we hold on, we're holding on. Mm -hmm. And that friction is unnecessary. So you let go, you catch flow, right? You move on. And yeah, that's the Costco 
package, bro. That's Costco, it. What's up? <laughs> Shout out Costco. Yeah, <laughs> Shout out Costco. Sponsor good service. <laughs> the free yeah, hot yeah, dogs. Yeah. And he he can sell you this whole package. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got to yeah. get to 8035. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you feel me on that, though? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's something that really yeah. puts me. It's like, yo, if, if you paid for this, you're not going to waste your life. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's why the concept of Jesus, because the reality of it is like, I have not seen him in person, right? Like yeah. I wasn't there when he died. He is, the idea of faith is believing in something you do not see. Yeah. But the concept of Jesus is so powerful when we subscribe to that understanding, right? Yeah. We don't fear. There's That's what the whole Bible is like, faith over fear. There's nothing to fear. Why? Because I'm on a Costco package. Like, I'm going to enjoy every, my kid getting sick, I'm going to enjoy this thing because this is interesting, right? Me going through some tragedy, I, of course, you don't want to go through a ton of tragedy, right? Like, that's, that's not, but, you know, when you do have that thing and you get to, like, use that cheat code of Jesus, right? Like, you don't have to rely on your own strength to figure every dang problem out. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. Come on, man. Like as a dad, yeah. like yeah. as a CEO, you know, I'm lucky. I get to be like, God help me. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I feel bad for people that don't have God. Yeah. Yeah. Because what do they do? Yeah. No, I'm going to help myself. Yeah. Right. And then get sick. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. all illnesses and all like these, a lot of those things stem from our self-reliance. Yeah. And us holding on to things. Right. Right. I don't want to do that no more. Oh, I, I want to live a life of just like, hey, God, like, and, and, and I'm working on it. I'm still getting refined. I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? Of course. But mm-hmm. as yeah. I surrender yeah. and I I don't, I, I let go of the things. Like, I literally, when I went to Hawaii, I, I don't know if you guys know this. I didn't, I didn't move to Hawaii. Do you know this? Do you guys know this? You were there just to be there temporarily. We went through some stuff. Yeah. I was like, what's one place that we can go to? And I went to Kauai and I was like, oh, okay, that's a place. Mm-hmm. So my, you know, we had some family stuff happen. Two weeks moved to two months. I was in my luggage, right? I, I didn't, we were on vacation. And then two months, or uh, and we stayed there for two months and then we extended our trip for another two months. Then I started looking for a home. I literally lived out of a, a luggage suitcase for a year. Mm-hmm. So we ended up moving to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anything. I, I literally got everything from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why you got this Costco. I was like, where did yeah, Costco yeah, come yeah, into yeah, this yeah, picture? Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I literally you got just everything from Costco. sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> I started a new mm-hmm. a new life, and I I never looked back. Yeah, and I was just like, I just what happened was I let go, and in my opinion, I caught flow. Right, mm-hmm. I caught something else. I I started. I I, I rode this new rhythm. Yeah. And it led me to where I got long hair now. I didn't have long hair back then, bro. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, I go surf now. Like, I never, yeah. I never surf. I've only known Daniel with long hair. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. yeah. I remember when I met you, I was just like, this guy has long hair. <laughs> I mean, y'all met, y'all met like in the pandemic, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ah, that's why, that's yeah. why. After, got you, got you, guys. Uh, right after. See, and that's funny, right? So like, even when we subscribe to Jesus, right? Like, I don't know the gangster Kevin. <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying like, mm. and that's the power of Jesus like it's so crazy like that you can literally receive this <sighs> person or mm. our Lord ours, and you are different mm-hmm. that minute mm. and now you don't need to subscribe to anything that the world has imposed onto you as your paradigms and patterns yeah. mm. you have now subscribed to a new pattern yeah Welcome, yeah. you are now an official Costco member and you get everything cheaper. No, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there it is, there it is. Um, bro, we, we could go forever talking, bro, man. And this is great because this is, you know, the first time having you on the podcast. And, yeah, um, and this you is know, the first episode. Yeah, this is episode <laughs> one. Um, no, it's not. Uh, but uh, Good Service is the name of our show. Um, you know, we, we love the, the amazing restaurants that provide good food and good service. And thank you, shout out Kismet for this amazing meal that we just crushed. Um, but good service also has uh, a meaning for everybody. The, the word good, the word service um, can mean anything to anybody. Uh, what does good service mean to you? I think it means being in the moment, you know, embracing the moment, going moment to moment. When you're at a restaurant eating, you don't want to be thinking about too much stuff. You, you're biting the food, you're savoring, you know, you're, 
you're uh, processing all the different flavors and you're embracing it all, right? So like what we did today, to me, this is good service. So it's good, to me, good means pono. Pono means righteous, it just means right. It just means this, right? Mm -hmm. it was about, this is how it was supposed to be. And service means we're doing something. So in, in good service, to me, it would be like, it's like a righteous, in the moment, sharing of time mm -hmm. and just being, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's a t-shirt right there. A righteous moment of sharing of time. <laughs> we have so many t-shirts we got to make. Shout yeah, out. Yeah, bro. You shout hear out shirts, bro. <laughs> Shout out Merch Labs for all, that, for all the goods. Uh, man, Daniel, thank you. Well, one, man, I want to acknowledge something. Um, again, uh, you were an early believer in, in this show. Before it was even called Good Service, before we even had a concept, we sat in your office and or yeah. we were just like, Yo, y'all should do a podcast. And we're like, what? What would we talk yeah. about? What yeah. would we do? And you know, here we are, fast forward, and um, you know, shout out for for blessing us with our equipment. And um, you know, with that, like, I don't take stuff like that lightly. You know what I mean? And you saw something that um, you, not knowing what it was, but you saw something valuable to be built, and and here we are in the process of still building. And so to kind of have you sit across from us and then have all these things sort of like, yo, we feel like we're just starting for the first time because all these things keep messing up. But um, there is like that, yeah, that day one humility. I think that's what the reminder, the lesson for today was, hey guys, just always be humble. Like you're starting for the first time. It doesn't matter how many, you know, days or reps or whatever that you feel like you've had in this mm -hmm. thing. It's it's just every time is a learning lesson. But I just want to acknowledge you as um as a as a brother, as a friend, as a mentor, um, somebody that I look up to for business, someone that I could just literally just chill and hang out with and and break bread and, and laugh and stuff like that. Like there is so much um, that you are to me personally, and you know, like Kevin speak for himself, but like just wanted to say this moment is very uh, special to me, and um, I'm just so blessed to have this moment with you, bro. I appreciate that. Hey, can I do something? Yeah. So you guys, have you had an episode yet where you've prayed on it? We haven't. Can I do something real quick? Can I just close in prayer? You could. You could. Is that yeah. cool? Yeah. 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 All right. Because right. we're we, closing. Is this what we're this doing? Is, yeah, we're closing. Yeah, we're closing, yeah, it closing it out. Yeah. I would do a quick, cl yeah. a quick yeah. one, right? Okay, let's let's, let's, pr let's pray with the audience. Yeah, let's, let's do go. it. Love Heavenly it. Father, Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you for good service. Thank you for episode one to wherever <laughs> this one's back at one. Heavenly Father, we pray for a refreshing Lord. A control alt delete and i pray heavenly father you break out through um this podcast mm -hmm. i pray mm -hmm. over ben and kevin lord i pray that you give them favor but most importantly lord that we subscribe to you i know that people might be mm -hmm. subscribing to this podcast but lord we subscribe to you mm -hmm. and that is how heavenly father your spirit will be felt i'm so grateful for these brothers and this time that we were able to spend uh this good service together and i'm just um i just we invite you in for whatever you want to do with this thing lord uh, we honor you with our, our voices and our words, but we stay heavenly focused on you, Lord. We listen to mm -hmm. the, heart, the, the heartbeat of heaven, Lord, and we want to impose that heavenly Father onto any material that is created. Thank you, Lord, for the time that you've given us to be with each other, spend this time. I don't take it lightly. We are in the moment of good service. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 There it is, man. Thank you, Daniel, for that. And, uh, Man, shout out to all the stewards out there. We love you. Yeah, yeah, stewards. One thing you guys gotta remember: leave room for those miracles, y'all. Leave room for the there miracles. It is. <laughs> Speaking of subscribe, yeah. If y'all aren't already subscribed, what are y'all doing, man? Subscribe, like, and follow us on our socials. We got all that stuff plugged into our intro in the caption. Um, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. We yes. have exclusive discount codes, event details. We all, we do have some live events coming up early next year in January. So be on the lookout. All that information is gonna be in the newsletter. So make sure you get onto there, subscribe to that. And also please write us reviews. So get onto your podcast platform of choice, Spotify, iTunes. Make sure you leave us that five-star rating and write us something, you know, ask us a question. Let us know what you're learning, guests that you would want us to bring on. We we read all that stuff. And um, to be honest, all that stuff helps us get visibility in the charts. So uh, we appreciate you guys' support in all of that. 
We love y'all. And, and share it. And share it. Yo, the algorithm rewards yes. sharing. Joe yeah, Jitsukawa, yeah. Show, shout out Joe. Just kidding, Joe. He's like, hey, he just shared some stuff on my messenger and yeah. he said, yo, this this helps the algorithm. So there we go. Yo, share, share the clip. it. And we always regram and repost those things. So, oh, and then, yo, we got that. The good service the goods. Merch. Make sure you hop on to the website. The link is in our link tree or it'll be up there somewhere. Um, but make sure you go cop the goods. That also helps uh, support us. And you look fresh, bro. Um, that's it. That's it. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next one. Good service. Shoot. Thank you for listening to this episode. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe and leave us that five-star rating. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Good Service Pod and on YouTube at Good Service Podcast. And if you'd like to support us, you can donate on Cash App at Good Service Podcast. Thank you. Peace.